biggest mistake is you mm -hmm. assign a task that's vital to the product to someone who sees it as sort of an extra credit assignment. For a big launch, if you want to make a $100 million product, you better have enough time. People don't put enough time into this. That is a bad way of doing things. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee at Direct Product. I'm featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies, a unicorn startup, and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we cover tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe, check out new video every Tuesday. Let's talk uh, regarding bigger companies first. Yeah, so okay. what's the process of launching a 100 million product and why launching product is the hardest product management life cycle? It's from the top first, the larger ones. Yeah, sure. So at a larger company, usually it's a team that is uh, jointly owned by the product manager who faces mm -hmm. inward mostly and the product marketer who faces outward. And, yeah. the, and they will be the heads of the team and then they'll bring together sort of a smattering of people from different groups, sales, service, documentation, legal, mm -hmm. finance, all those sort of things. And for a big launch, if you want to make a $100 million product, you better have enough time. That's really an issue. People don't put enough time into this. They think that, you know, the day the code ships is the day that we launch. So that's just should not, that is a bad way of doing things. You need time. That's far, far <laughs> away from real launches. I think um, it really depends on who you talk to. The talk to engineers, I'm done, ship my code. Then talk to up, marketers, like, <laughs> Yeah, there's no sales, so marketers doesn't doesn't count at launch. Yeah. Right. So for a big launch, maybe two months, maybe three months in advance, you're really mm -hmm. working on this. It could be longer in different industries if you have regulatory requirements or if you have a lot of enterprise customers that need an adoption cycle. Maybe it's even longer. Um, mm -hmm. And you're and you're working that whole time, and you're figuring out what documents need to be created, training, uh, com communications, approvals. You know, you can't just write a press release at a big company. You need, it needs to go through twenty different levels of approval, translations mm -hmm. for different markets. And that that workflow is uh, cross-functional, which makes it difficult. It's undefined, yeah. um, and uh, it's some of it's quite hard, um, right? It's not not mm -hmm. easy to figure out, um, you know, why is this feature or this product actually important to the target consumer, and how do you communicate it in such a way that really brings them to the table? That's that's a, that's more of a soft comms issue, but it's yeah. all part of the same effort, right? Um, yeah. Especially when you mentioned this different company had different process and different people yeah. involved. And actually I speak to my own pain point. And two years ago, I helped Verizon to launch the first 5G edge computing product in collaboration mm. with AWS and Azure. And at the time, not only internally, we need to launch it and externally, we need to work with multiple different companies. And you're yeah. right, all the legal standpoint and also who do you talk to, the messaging is different. And mm -hmm. when you talk to customers, do you prioritize certain segment or you want to make it broad to make it to everybody, right? So very different. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, please continue. So we talk about the people involved and messaging is different. Um, yeah, what are the process involved in launching like hard and big product? <laughs> yeah, um, well, so um, I've spoken to maybe 30, 40 companies at this point in in-depth mm -hmm. interviews to find out how they do it. Um, and so step one is, triage it's we have to all agree is this a big release or not there's actually mm -hmm. a big problem where sometimes the pro every product manager is ambitious and they want yeah. to they want their product to be the one that people talk about in the wall street journal and it gets excited yeah. and that's not the case so there there has to be alignment because sometimes marketing will say to product management this thing that you're dedicating your life to it's not that important we're not spending money on it sorry <laughs> uh <laughs> You know, and that's that's a tough one. Um, so so which means everyone has to be on page. Cool. So which means that company had different priorities in in terms of how much marketing budget they put on different product. So some Absolutely. like smaller ones, you don't you don't get enough support when you launch a product. Exactly. And so the best practice huh. is that at an executive level, you agree on sort of a tiering system. What does large mean? What does medium mean? What does small mean? And how much effort do each of those take? And let's look at the roadmap for the next 12 months with product management and put a little LM and or S next to each one of those things so that mm -hmm. we don't get we're not disconnected. Um, so that's step one. Step two, create the team. I already talked about that. It's always cross functional and you need people who have the time and effort to do things. The biggest mistake, especially at more of a small, medium-sized company, is you mm -hmm. assign a task that's vital to the product uh, launch to someone who sees it as sort of an extra credit assignment. 
Like some support oh. guy, some support guy or girl is given the job of writing writing the release notes for the documentation center. And they have a real job. They're just doing it because like, hey, that's fun. I'll do that. That's no, it, it, but they need to it have assigned? the time. Um, well, because yeah. sometimes you don't have a dedicated person. Maybe there isn't like sales training would be another example. Not every company has a dedicated L and D learning and development team. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so you need to train the sales force. Who's going to do it, right? So, so very often someone will raise their hand. Some ambitious younger person will say, oh, I'm in sales. I'll do the sales training. Oh. No, they need to have the resources necessary to do the job. Exactly. This reminds me. When, <laughs> so funny. So when I launched the the 5G Edge computing product and as well as the Smart Cities product for Verizon years ago, I was one day training and mm -hmm. I thought there is learning and development center, even in Verizon. I thought mm -hmm. like, they're going to take it over. <laughs> but when they <laughs> but it's not, it's not <laughs> they, they, they took it over after it's really mature. Right. After it's right. very, very mature, they know everything about messaging, but at very beginning when we need to sell to, let's say, a few beta customers and I train my sales guys. It, mm -hmm. Yes, I need training. I see. And then nobody teach me how to train sales guys to figure out myself. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, mm. and, and that's a sales is actually a big um, uh, problem, pain point in this whole process because sales has it has its own momentum. You know, salespeople are mm -hmm. also ambitious. They want to make their number. Oh, they want to sell things. And you have it's very easy to have misalignment where they try to sell things that are not the right things to sell, like wrong customer mm -hmm. type for the product, but they but they want to make money. So they try to fit it in or the opposite. They don't realize where the opportunities are. Um, mm -hmm. So um, the go to market process needs to really work through some of these nuances. Um, and unfortunately, it, it very often is that either product marketer person or product manager who has to do the legwork to figure out what the mechanisms are that will make sales successful because sales mm -hmm. leadership may not really be staffed or operate that way.